Today I'm going to show you how to do this animation, how to make a trail of copies of a character or any object that is moving. So let's do it. Okay, first of all, we need an object or a character moving. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the website Mixamo that is totally free. The only thing you need is an account and you can get a lot of free animations with different characters. So here we have our animations. I'm going to look for a run animation. We have different and I'm going to use this one that I saw before that is called a standard run. And here you can preview the animation. Really important to look this animation. Don't click here. If you click here, the animation stay in the place. We don't want that. We want the character to be animated in one direction. So disable this. And if you want to change your character, go here in character. So this is for animations and this for characters. Let's clean this and you can select different characters for your animation. But I'm going to use the default bot. So I'm going to write bot and select the mail. Now I have this animation. I like it. So let's go to download and I'm going to leave everything like this and press download. Now let's open Blender, delete everything, go to File, Import, FBX, and go to the folder where you have the file that you download and import it. Okay, so here we have our animation. And if I press play, as you can see, it's the animation, but it stops right here. Why? Let's open the timeline. And here you can see the keyframes. You can see that after the keyframes, it stops because we don't have any more keyframes. If you don't see the keyframes because you click here to see the keyframes, select armature. So what we want is to look this character. We want to do two actions. The first action is to move this object in this direction and then to loop all the movement, the steps, the arms, etc. So how we do that? First of all, let's go to graph editor and here you can see all the keyframes. But there is more keyframes hidden here. So with the mouse wheel, you can click and drag and make a zoom in and zoom out. And first of all, we need to select this blue line. To see it better, I recommend you with everything selected. If it's not selected because you click out, press A and go to view, frame all. And now you can see better this blue line. This blue line is the movement of going in this direction. So after this, it stops. And this means that is this position. And what we want is that this line continues because that means that this object, this character, it will continue moving in this direction. So how we do that? First of all, click out, click one point of this line and press L. L is to select all the keyframes of this line. Only this line. We don't want the other lines. And now press Shift E and select linear extrapolation. And thanks to this, boom, what we are doing is that the movement, it continues in this direction, only the object, not all the animations. And you can see it if I press play. Okay, first action done. Now, what we want is to repeat, to cycle these actions, that is, these steps, etc. But without really important selecting this. Because if we select all, pressing A, and we loop this, this is going to start again. This point will be like this, so it will be like that. So we need to lock this. Oh, select again this with L. And let's go to hips, because this keyframes is this one, as you can see. If I click out, we cannot see it. But if I click here and I press L, is this. And now let's lock it. So if we press A, now it's selecting everything except this line. Perfect. Now what we want, I'm going to press Ctrl and mouse wheel to make a zoom, is to loop this action. How we do that? We need to go here where it says modifiers, but now you cannot see it. So to see this window, just select one dot. It doesn't matter which one. And now you can see it, modifiers. However, before we apply this, we need to select everything. So press again A, and now go to modifiers, and select cycles. And you will see that this is repeating the action 
of the movement of the character. So if we press play, now it's working perfectly. Okay, perfect. We did the two important actions. Now let's go to geometry nodes. So right now I have selected the armature and you cannot add a geometry nodes in the armature. We have to add it or here or here. We are going to add it in both because in this scenario we have the surface and the joints. So you can select this one first if you want, create a new profile and let's call it, for example, trail of copies. And what I want, because I want to make copies of this, so also I want to make copies of the joints. This, I'm going to hide the surface so you can see better. So I need to apply the same geometry node. How I do that? I select the joints, click new, and select the geometry nodes that we created. So now the joints and the surface are sharing the same geometry node. So we'll have copies of the joints and the surface. Perfect. Now you can hide this if you want. And let's stay here because it's the same. It doesn't matter if you select joints or this. It's the same. So how we make copies of this? You will see that it's really, really easy. The only thing we have to do is to use simulation job. Let's connect this here. Let's connect this and connect it here. And if you don't know how simulation nodes works, I recommend you to watch my tutorial. But basically, what this does is that whatever you add in the middle of this process is going to repeat this action every frame. So, if we add a joint geometry and we connect the original geometry here, what is going to happen is that every frame is going to add a copy of this object. And remember, this object is moving. So if we press play, we have this animation. Because what is happening is that it's adding a copy, but it's not moving the copy because we don't have any set position. So it's like freezing the object at this time, where it was. So it's really easy to create this effect. However, we have a problem. The problem is that, as you can see, we have too many copies, and this is making your computer going slow. And we can see that because if we go to the spreadsheet, we can see that we are getting millions and millions of vertex, edge, whatever. Look, I'm going to start again, and you will see how fast this increase. Millions and millions. So, what we have to do is to create a lifetime. To say, hey, the first copies that have an age, let's delete after a number of frames. So how we do that? To do this, I'm going to hide this for now. We need to create an attribute of age. So let's use store name attribute. And we need to stack one value every frame. So let's call this age. And to stack one value, we need to use a math node. Connect it here. Let's select one value. And here we need to reuse the same attribute the same list. So let's use name attribute and connect it here and reuse this. Copy and paste it. Why? Because, so for example, the first frame is adding one value. However, if you don't connect this, every age will be always one, one, one. However, thanks to this, is checking the next frame, the previous age, so this was one value, and if this was one value, then it's adding one value more. So it will be two. And the next frame will be three because it's checking, adding one, etc. Okay, we created a list. And you are thinking, what is the list? This list is hidden in, right now we have too many things, but it's hidden in the final of this. Here, H. As you can see, if I select integer, we can see this. So, as you can see, all the geometries have an age, the first ones have a maximum age of 35, because we have 35 frames played. So we have a list of age. And now what we can do with this information, we can hide this if you want, actually I'm going to close it, is to say, hey, whatever have an age of, for example, 20, delete it. That means that this one, that was the first one, will be delayed. So we will see the trail shorter. So, let's call this H. 
and let's add here the late geometry and let's create a condition greater than so the late all the geometry that is greater than the age so let's reduce this let's make a copy I'm going to press alt p and connect it here so this is the lighting any geometry that the age okay the age this list that we have is greater than this number so if i press play we don't see anything because it's deleting everything however if i select for example 20 i'm just saying delete everything that is older than 20 if not show it so let's press play and see it and now as you can see we have a shorter trail of copies so with this you can define the lifetime actually let's call this lifetime with a new attribute i'm going to use an integer and let's go into here and here and let's call it lifetime because later maybe we are going to use it so don't worry it's the same we are just creating an attribute for this because maybe in the shade editor we want to use this information so this number is the number of copies okay number of copies for example if i select two you can see better two copies if i select five we have five copies okay perfect now we have a problem maybe you like it but maybe you are thinking hmm i want more copies but i don't want all the copies to be together because i want to see better the animation i mean this is really cool but i want to see better every step so how i can say that don't do copies every frame so to do this let me call this lifetime what we have to do is to go here and make like a filter when it's adding this geometry every frame and say hey don't add this geometry every frame we have to create a condition a filter here so we can do this with a simple node called switch and select it in geometry because we are using geometry and we are going to create a condition so when the condition is true it's not going to add something and if it's false it's going to add this so we're going to use a scene time and use the frames information with a simple math note and select pretty important modulo basically this let's connect it here to understand how this works is that if you add a value here for example five what we are saying right now is add a copy every five frames that's all so let's check it let's start again and let's check it so now every five frames is adding a copy so this is how you do to create more space between the copies if you want more space select a higher number and now you can see better we have a problem now that the first frame we don't see the copy because this is a starting in the number that you are selecting so it's taking 10 frames to add the first copy so if we want to see the first copy in the first frame then we need to connect this here so i'm going to make a copy and connect it here but right now we can see the first the original object from the first frame and this is how you decide how many space do you want and how many copies now is not the number of copies it's the number of copies but we are deleting the copies in the middle so more or less is how long is the trail of the copies so if you want to show more let's select something like 60 and let's start again and maybe you can select something like 6 and you can see this really cool effect like frozen the copies of this character okay now i want to show you a final trick how to change the color based in the lifetime so let's add here send material select the default material 
Let's go to the material view. Let's open a new tab. Select the shade editor. Let's press end to hide this and select this default material. So let's select material. First of all, let's check if this works. Okay, perfect. So what I want now is to make the last copies more invisible or have a different color. So we can use the information of the age and the lifetime. That's why I created this store name attribute. So to do this, let's bring the node attribute because we want to use this information. So let's write here age. And what I want is to use a color RAM and define a range of colors. For example, uh, let's do, I don't know, blue and black. Okay, so right now it's working, but it's not working because we need to compare this or divide it by the lifetime. So let's make a copy of this and select the lifetime. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And we need to divide this. Or actually, oops, you can use map range if you want. It is the same. So let's connect this here because this is the maximum lifetime. And as you can see, what is happening right now is taking the age and the lifetime, and we are mapping these colors. So the first ones are this color, and the last ones this color. If I move this, you can see that I'm changing the color of the copies. Also, what you can do if you want is to add more colors, of course. So as you can see, you can create really cool effects. However, I want to make it, for example, invisible the last ones. So I'm going to select black, one color and black. And if we let me see the black. If we connect the black in alpha, what we are saying is that the last copies be more and more invisible. By the way, I'm going to press N and select in options, render method, blended. And now we should see the last copies like disappearing. So this is how you can create this really cool effect where the copies appear like that. If you want to see the original runner, not only the first frame continuously, then what you have to do is to connect this here with a joint geometry. Let's connect it here. And in theory, it should work. As you can see right now. And this is the final effect. I recommend you to try different shaders and different techniques to have the look that you want. And if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and remember, you can do this project and many more on my pattern. And see you in the next video.